Hello and welcome to the Molecast. My name is Greg and in this video today I will be bring, having a look at how to play Star Wars X-Wing on the Tabletop Simulator. Now, Tabletop Simulator is a program that allows players to recreate their favorite tabletop games in a virtual environment. And of course, Star Wars X-Wing is a tabletop war game that recreates space dogfighting with your favorite Star Wars factions, as I'm sure you're all well aware. So let's take a look at how you can jump into a game, play remotely with your friends, or even strangers using the magic of the internet. Your first step will be to get into Steam and search for Tabletop Simulator. So here we have the Steam store. I've navigated to it. Um, I've left myself logged out so that you will be able to see the purchase options. And here we search for Tabletop Simulator. It comes up pretty quickly. It's a very popular game. Navigate to the page and here you can see Tabletop Simulator. Uh, often it's going, uh, its base price is 220 Rand. Often it's on discount, as you can see, the lowest recorded price was 109, but that was quite a while ago. But I know they put it on discount fairly often, so if you're in no rush to get it, uh, maybe just add it to your wish list and it'll go on discount eventually. Otherwise, uh, they offer the four pack option, so you can buy it with a few friends and it'll work out to be cheaper for you as well. Uh, once you've completed your purchase by adding it to your cart, uh, you can then install it in Steam and uh, let the download complete and the next step is mods. Now that you have Tabletop Simulator installed, you'll want to head over to the library page of your Steam games and open up Tabletop Simulator. I've got it here, saved in my favorites. And once you're on your Tabletop Simulator page, uh, before you click play, what you actually want to do is go into the workshop here because this is where you're going to find your X-Wing mod. Navigate over to the workshop and here it is. Here's all, all the options for the various games you can play in Tabletop Simulator. These are all fan-made, so you can search for pretty much anything to your heart's content. But what we're here today for is X-Wing. So let's search for X-Wing and see what comes up. Right, so there's a lot of X-Wing mods, um, but the one we recommend is actually, if you scroll down a little bit and find uh, X-Wing Unified 2.0, because this is from our experience, the most comprehensive mod so far. So once you've found X-Wing Unified 2.0, and in fact, you can even just search for it in the first place. You can open up the page, uh, it'll give you a brief description of what's inside of it. Uh, but more importantly, here's where you click subscribe. And once you've subscribed to it, the pack will download automatically in the background, and then it'll be ready to play in your game when you launch it. Once you've got the mod pack downloaded and you open up your tabletop simulator, this is the landing page you'll be greeted with over here. Now this is where you can set up a server or join a server, depending on whether you are creating it or your friend is creating it. So obviously join and go there, but we today are going to create a server. So you go to create, obviously we want to play multiplayer, and you could also create a single player game if you wanted to just play around and test the game. But we're making multiplayer. Give your server a name. If you don't want random people joining in, you give your server a password and you click create server. So now it loads up and then this gives you a choice of what you want to play on your server. So here I've got a lot of games installed, but I'm going to select the X-Wing Unified 2.0 that I selected. As a pro tip, when you're in your workshop, you can actually organize it into all different folders and that will help you keep your games organized when you're playing. But here today we're playing X-Wing, so we load that up. And it's loading, and there we go. Now obviously it takes a few seconds to load the assets in. Uh, give you a progress bar up here. Things will appear slowly. And then just like magic, we have our X-Wing table. Now, so that we have our table loaded, what we're missing is the ships, you will notice. There's no ships here. So. What we have to do is we fly over to the side of the table where we've got the list creator. Now, the list creator has several modes. Uh, the easiest way I find is to use a TTS spawner. So that's where you use uh, your favorite list builder and it exports it into TTS format. Uh, you could manually go through and build your list here by selecting each ship one by one. But I'm just going to use a TTS spawner. I prepared a lovely imperial list today. It's very creative. Just paste it here 
and you click spawn list. And automatically, your list gets spawned. It's loading in for me. And there we go. Look at all those beautiful, beautiful TIE Fighters ready to launch from a Star Destroyer's base. So now I like to grab the list, pick them up, and bring them over to my side of the table. Now obviously I don't have a color yet because nobody else is in this game, but it's good to select your color. Uh, the mouse wheel, by the way, is how I rotated them so easily. Uh, and it's a drag select to select them all. So here, you must select your color at the top of the screen here. You click your name, you change your color, and you must select one of the colors associated with the side of a board. Otherwise, you won't be able to assign your dials. So here we go. I'm red, currently, obviously. And now our noble squadron of TIE Fighters is almost ready to go. Uh, one last thing during setup is you need to assign your dials to each TIE Fighter. That's easy. You just drag it on, and you'll see the name will become part of your black squadron base. Here, black squadron ace, just like that. Now uh, you'll notice I'm flying all the same ship. Now this obviously is a pain because uh, it says black squadron ace six and black squadron ace six. But sometimes uh, when you're flying around the table, you might get confused. So what you can also do as a neat little trick is you can change the color. If you right click your ship and you go color tint. As a tip, you can change the color. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. You've got to get the actual base itself, not the... See, I didn't get the base. I'm going to select green. green. There we go. Now we've got a green base. And then if you want, you can also toggle the color of your dice. Green. And there we go. Now I'm much less, less likely to... Oh, I accidentally summoned it for me. Didn't mean for you to come there. Okay, there we go. There's my Black Squadron Ace green. And you can do it for the rest of your ships. Uh, but I mean, if you're happy with just the numbers, that also works too. Alright, next up, we've got playing. Uh, also, well, during setup as well, uh, you can toggle the playmat. Say you don't want to fight a best bin here. There's buttons on the side to change your playmat to one you find more aesthetically appealing. There we go. Let's fight over these lovely ruined Star Destroyers. We're avenging their deaths. And um, yeah, let's uh, also turn on our rulers. This will give you the deployment zone. Uh, this is very useful in that uh, this helps you set your debris and asteroids. See, there's infinite piles of them here. And if you want to change your asteroids and debris, uh, you just hover over it and you can right click and it's change the state. But the quick key is just to use the number keys. So here I want that one, that one, and that one. Number five, number five, number five. Oh, there we go. And then we've got number five of each. And then your opponent will do the same. After that, uh, your opponent needs to set them up as well. So let's just say they do this. I just copied and pasted. Obviously, they can pull out their own, and then we're ready to deploy. And we've got deployment rulers, just like that, magically. Now that we're all set up, uh, and we can start playing a game of X-Wing using the X-Wing rules. Um, you've noticed I've loaded in a few extra ships, and I've even placed some already on the battlefield. That's just for example purposes. Obviously, your opponent will have deployed over at the back here. So, how the game works. Uh, first things first, the dial. Let's look at our green friend here. Uh, also, as a pro tip, uh, sometimes the dials are quite small. You can zoom in, but to increase the dial size, you can right click and go scale up or use the plus key on the keyboard, like so. This makes things a lot easier to see. I often like to just increase my dials just a little bit in size, just so that I can click the buttons much easier. Now, um, what you can do with this dial, this dial acts as an, a magical remote control for your ship. So uh, my ship's deployed there and as a pro tip, once you've deployed your ship, I recommend pushing the L key to lock him down in place. This is, oh see I've unlocked him actually, because I had unlocked him already. So I've locked him in place now and now I can't, I can't move him, right? Which is good because I can't accidentally bump him off the table or knock him flying or anything like that. Instead, I'm going to use the dial to move him. 
So here you click on the star. So remember I assigned my dial to my ship. That's why it says eight there and eight here. So we know it's the right dial for the right ship. We click moves. Now this will show you if you've assigned it correctly. Oops, uh, this will show you all the moves for your ship available. Now here, this is a TIE fighter dial. So let's let's decide we're going forward forward. We're going to go head towards the threats of those rebel scum. Once and well, in this window is open, your opponent cannot see this window, so don't worry about it. Uh, you, your opponent can't see what you're deciding, this is invisible to them. And once you've decided your move, you simply click set, like so. And you do that for all your ships. I'm not going to do it now in this example, because I'm just going to show you this one ship. And once all your dials are set and you start activating an initiative order, so we're initiative 3. So uh, the X-Wing ships have moved up here because they're all at initiative 2, those slow, unskilled pilots that they are. And now our lovely ship is going to go Black Squadron Ace. So to activate our Black Squadron Ace, you just flip this dial with the F key, whoosh, and bam, it shows your uh, movement there. And you literally just click move. Watch, I'm going to click move, and you're going to see him move automatically. Bam, just like that. And it even says it in the log here, Black Squadron Ace flew straight fall. Now, if I had bumped into another ship or flown over an asteroid, the, the sh uh, I would be given the bumped status here for bumping. Or flying over an asteroid, it will immediately highlight the asteroid and mention that I hit or landed on it. But I didn't, thankfully. And then now for our actions, right? So actions-wise, uh, if you hover over the T here, it provides you all the action availabilities, even if your ship can't do it. So obviously I can't cloak because my TIE fighter can only focus evade and barrel so here if i want to focus i just click focus and there it's automatically assigned me a focus from the focus pool if i don't want to use the dial to do that i can manually go here and pull it but this is a much better method because it associates the focus with the ship and if the ship happens to move it'll take the focus token with them um, but also you can manually uh, automatically rather uh, barrel roll so that's this option here you can see there's all the barrel options to the right forward middle back to the left forward middle back so if i wanted to barrel roll that way it would automatically do it for me and say it in the log but obviously in this case i do not want to do it so uh, that was a mistake undo instead i wanted it to focus so let's have our focus token there i'm going to kill that x-wing scum now uh, all the other ships will move as usual as per the game rules and then it'll come to the attacking phase. Uh, obviously there's other actions in here like um, boosts and such, but in this case uh, we don't have a boost on a TIE fighter, so it's not here. But uh, all, the, all the ship's actions will be available. Um, right, next up we've got attacking. To how to attack the enemy, uh, it used to be a lot more complicated. You used to have to go here onto the left and then say, show me my ranges for my front arc. Um, and they've obviously disabled it now because it's no longer an option. <laughs> so it used to be it would show your full arc. And uh, oh, there I see it's loading. Ah, there we go. It was just loading in. So here, uh, look, you'd have to make a call like, Oof, is that range one or range two? It's right on the edge. I can't tell. Uh, that's definitely range three. Oh, but look, it's sort of in the front of range two. You know what? Thankfully, for all of our sanity, they've removed this. You can remove it by clicking here, or you can remove it by clicking back on the dial here. Let's go back on the dial, go away. See, it's gone. They've added the most beautiful of features. You right click on your ship, and you go fire arc front. Give it a second to load, and in fact, it shows you in the log here. Blue Squadron Escort 2 is at range 2. There we go. Blue Squadron Escort is at range 2. So both of them are in fact at range 2. So this one, which looked like it might have been range 1, is actually range 2. And this one is also at range 2. So now I can decide, okay, I actually want to shoot at this Blue Squadron Escort because uh, I'm worried about him shooting back at me. So you look at your ship's uh, attack value, which is 2. I'm at range 2, so no bonuses. And you just pull dice out of here. If you want to pull multiple dice, when you left click and pull a dice, you can right click and get as many as you want but in this case we only need two um, once you've got your two dice uh, you can either shake vigorously to roll and let go like that uh, i don't know that gave me a really good roll but i don't really like that technique i much prefer just selecting my dice with the drag select and pushing the r key multiple times rolls them in the spot and there we go a hit and an eye 
Now, you'll notice also that the dice uh, will tell you exactly what it is that they've got. It says I and hit. So therefore, there is no such thing as a cocked dice in this game. As long as you hover over it, it tells you what the result is. So even if it's really skewed, let's see if we can get it skewed. Uh, well, I can't quite get it skewed, but uh, if we could somehow reproduce a skewed dice. No. Anyways, so it'll always tell you what it is. So obviously in this case, uh, I got my hit and my eye. I'm going to spin my focus. Now, uh, to change the dice, uh, the easiest way is to right-click rotation value, and there's all the options. Or you can just use your number keys, so there I go 3 to a hit because I spent my focus. Now, uh, obviously, to the pesky rebel, uh, X-Wing is going to try and evade my two hits with his two evade dice. So uh, this would now be the blue player's turn to draw two of those, place them over wherever, and give them a roll. And he's evaded one of them but taken a damage. So now, this would be the point where he flips his shield token over. Uh, once again, the F key does this magically enough, uh, and it flips it down. If, for example, his shields have been down and he needs to take damage, you'll find your damage deck on the right here. I recommend at the beginning of the game giving it a good shuffle, uh, and the best way to do that is the same as rolling a dice. It's the R key, just gives it a nice little shuffle there, and you know it's shuffled. Uh, so if you needed to deal with damage, you just draw it from the deck and place it on the X-Wing. And if you needed a crit, it's the exact same thing. Draw from the deck, place it by the X-Wing, and then F to flip. Ah, a direct hit. Lucky us. Um, and that's shooting. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the dice are very easy to use. And uh, overall, all of the tokens are available on the side of the board, should you need to manually do something. But most of it is built into your dial. Uh, there's also all the templates, uh, but you'll find during most games you won't need to use them at all because of the automation. And uh, oh yes, once you're done uh, shooting, you can obviously right click and fire up front off again. And it's back to normal and everyone else gets to go. That's the basics. Uh, if, if a ship were to be destroyed, so say that poor X-Wing was on its last hull, it took a damage. Excuse me, oh, no, it took the direct, yes, it took the direct. It's dead. So uh, you can then right click and just, oh, so if you've locked your ship down, so there, I've unlocked him now. If he's locked down, I'm not sure if you can delete. Oh, you can. Okay. So there, I've deleted the X-Wing. Now, uh, if if that was a mistake, uh, your host has a rewind time event. You just click rewind time. It's a little bit of a pain because it takes a while to load. As you can see, it's essentially just reset time. Oh. But... Uh, one ship is still missing. We need to rewind again. Yes, there we go. Okay, so you might need to click it a few times, depending if anyone else has touched anything or moved anything. Time's rewound. Uh, but the much easier way of doing it would be, so let's say someone accidentally deleted it, and they're like, oh, no, 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 you've still got one hole. Uh, it's because this card wasn't dealt, it wasn't directed. Uh, then, what you can do, rather than rewinding time, is in fact, you can go into the builder here, you can spawn a single, let's go X-Wing, see if that works, X-Wing, X-Wing, of course it's not going to work. Um, what's the pilot name on these guys? They are the Blue Squadron Escort, so let's go. See, this is why I don't like spawning manual ships. Blue Squad, it's a bit fiddly compared to just not a quad, Blue Squad. Here we go, search. Blue Squadron Escort, okay, keep me. Like magic, it has summoned one in here, but we, we just want to select him, and then in our chat here, we should be able to, oh, uh, not in our chat. In the description for the model, right? You right click the model, and in description you go restore. Restore. It didn't work. Restore hash one, my mistake. Had the name wrong. Restore hash one. And bam, like magic, put it exactly where it used to be. So the log will always keep you up to date on uh, on the commands you can use to undo mistakes like that or fix things. But for the most part, you'll find uh, it's a very user-friendly experience. Uh, games can be quite quick because everything's automated. You don't have to fiddle with the movement templates or anything like that. And overall, it's a great experience. Uh, I highly recommend it. 
Um, and that's the basics. Uh, there's a few more advanced commands you can learn, but uh, you can you can look those. Uh, you can either visit their Discord or you can uh, uh, visit their patch, their, their log notes for the mod. Uh, there's much more complicated things you can do, but you don't really need them to play a game. Um, we like to use a Discord server in game as well. Speaking of Discord, uh, we have dedicated Discord servers we play on. Um, for in-game communications, just so you can get that talking back and forth. It's much better than uh, than typing out what you're doing in where. Um, as far as typing out goes, uh, you can tab and click if you don't have voice comms. If you hold the tab key and click with your pointer tool, uh, it'll uh, give you a nice little point. So you're like, okay, this ship is firing at this ship. And it's, it's pretty clear what you're doing. But uh, voice comms can't be beat. And that's it for the basics. Um, for any other questions you have, feel free to uh, pop it in the comment section and we will answer them. Thank you for taking the time to watch and we hope to see you out there playing some X-Wing. Um, let us know if you want a game. Thanks for watching and bye. Hey, it's Sean from Allcast. Click here if you want to see some more. Click there if you want to like us. Click me if you want to see some good.